name is Lano Jordan. Um, my mother first brought me as a young child to St. Barnabas, even before the temporary church was built, because my mother used to go to the small church, the small brick church, which was there previously and is still there now today. And this was in 1928, uh, when I was seven. Uh, she w wanted to get me uh, to join the choir. So uh, she got an appointment with me with a choir master. And, and the first thing he asked me, uh, uh, can you sing? <laughs> and uh, I, I said, uh, yeah, I'm not very good. <laughs> he said, well, if you want to be a chorister in my choir, you'll have to start learning pretty quickly. And he said, I will take you on as a probationer and you will learn all about how you have to sing and how you have to behave when you're in church. And this was in 1928. And I was eventually able to join the choir in 1930 when um, our vicar, who was the Reverend Tom Lambert, came to Tuffley. And I immediately uh, got to like uh, Reverend Tom. He was a lovely man, and uh, I was very happy to uh, have the opportunity to um, sing in the choir. And of course, this was over at the old temporary church, which is now the church hall. And I sang in the choir um, until I was 15, and that was in 1936. Uh, and by then I was 15, and uh, my voice had broken, so um, I, I had to leave the, the choir uh, with a later opportunity to join the male choir in the years ahead. Those were very happy days for me. Uh, and the one that most, the most outstanding thing that, uh, is, uh, which I remember was in 1933 and it was Sunday the 16th of April, which on that day was Easter Day, on the 16th of April, 1933. The church was really full, and we had people who didn't have seats, and our job as choristers then, before the service could start, mm. was to find every seat we could lay our hands on. Um, I found myself going up into the, uh, into the little church and grabbing every seat I could lay my hands on so that everybody w was able to sit down. And it was then that the Reverend Tom made this wonderful statement completely out of the blue, completely unexpected, and he got into the pulpit and he said, my apologies because the service is starting a bit late, yeah. 
Uh, but we've been trying to get you all sat down before the service can start. Yeah. And uh, I think we pretty well achieved that now. But he said, you know what? This church isn't big enough for us. This church is not big enough. We need a bigger church. Uh, everybody sort of uh, uh, who was there seemed to think it was funny that he should say that. And uh, there was quite a bit of laughter when he said, we need a bigger church. He said, no, I'm serious. And said, we could have a bigger church. Across the road. In the big field across the road. We could build a bigger church there. And somebody, or two or three people in the audience said, where are you going to get the money from, Vicar? <laughs> he said, if we make up our minds, God will help us to get that money. And we can have a bigger church. And from that day onwards, all he thought about and spoke about, and very often when he was making uh, his sermons, he used to have this saying, when we get across the road, we will have that. And he was repeating that time and time again. When we get across the road, we will have that church. And he never let go of it. And although a lot of people laughed at him and said, it's a wonderful idea, but to build a bigger church, you need quite a lot of money. Anyway, he was incredibly, incredibly incredible man. He motivated those people at Tuffley to think it, and they even believed it was possible. Uh, and the fundraising was done with great energy. And it took from then, um, 1933, So we got to 1938 when they laid the foundation stone. And that was an incredible effort from 1933 to 1938 to the get to the stage where we actually laid this foundation uh, stone for this present church. And now we've reached the stage. Today, we're actually celebrating when it, the church was consecrated on the 27th of September, 1940. On the 27th of September. And that's what we are celebrating today. It was all due to his inspiration that he had, that it was possible. And he convinced that lovely congregation in Tuffley that it was possible. And for, for seven long years, people worked hard to make that possible. This was done in various manners of fundraising, like rummage sales. Uh, in those days, uh, we used to have the, a big vicarage garden 
which is not there anymore because, as, as a lot of you know, um, houses have been built over at the vicarage. But before then, the vicarage had a large garden. And we used to hold garden fates there. We'd have a, 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 a spring fate. We'd have a summer fate. And we'd have an autumn fate. And raising money all the time towards this a uh, wonderful effort to get the church uh, with sufficient money to be able to build it. So that's how this church came to be decided on. And it was really due to uh, the Reverend Tom Lambert's inspirational way of getting it across to everybody, that it could happen. And with the congregation and God's help, he made it happen. From that Easter Sunday, which was then a 6.30 in the evening song, sermon, with a sermon uh, at 6.30 on the 16th of April, 1933. I have here a Bible which was presented to me, which I treasure greatly. Uh, it was presented to me by Tom Lambert uh, uh, on the day that I left the choir. Um, and I can tell you those are some of the happiest days of my life. And as choir boys, when our voice broken, became broken, um, some, of, some of us were given the opportunity to uh, do serving duties um, at communion services. And, and um, I was invited to be a server. And after I left the choir, I became a regular server uh, at uh, communion services after that, uh, right up until the time when the war started, uh, when I was called up, which is in 1939. I was called, uh, called up to the army in 1939. And until then, I was doing um, serving duties uh, at communion services. One of the things we had in those days uh, to keep uh, us boys interested, we even had a cricket team. We even had a cricket team. Uh, we never played on Sunday because That was a time when we used to go to church. But Saturdays in, during the week, we would have matches quite frequently. And those are very good days. And us boys enjoyed that. And I'm sorry to say, I don't know of any one of those team who I play with who is still alive today. Sadly. It has virtually lived with me for the large part of my life. Because even when uh, we moved from Tuffley and went to live in Stroud, when I came back, before we went to Stroud, um, I used to attend St. Michael's Church, was, as you know, is at 7th Avenue. But that, we were there for the opening 
And we were also there for the closing, sadly. In fact, Reverend Charlton rang me up and said, Lano, I want you to name the last hymn that will ever be sung. It's St. Michael's. And, and I was very pleased to be, I, I wasn't pleased it was closing, but I was pleased to be invited to uh, name the hymn. And the name of the hymn was Tell Out My Soul. And it was a favorite of St. Barnabas for many years. St. Barnabas has been a great friend to me in many ways, not only for the thing that I achieved at St. Barnabas, but also for, um, I belong to quite a large family and quite a lot of our family used to attend St. Barnabas and uh, very often we could all be together um, uh, worshipping him. <clears throat> so uh, those are the earliest members of the I've got of St. Barnabas. But when we came back to Tufty, we started coming back to St. Barnabas. Um, and uh, my wife and I um, have had many happy days uh, being with friends at the church here. And those were very happy days. Two years ago, we had a very important service here. That was the um, anniversary of the laying of the foundation stone. And uh, Reverend Janet um, asked me to present a prayer on that day. Which I have here. And what it says in that prayer is true for now. I would just like to tell you some of the words that was in the prayer. Because what I wanted to do was to emphasize the thanks that we have for the life of the Reverend Tom Lambert, who served this church uh, for 21 years. And it was the way that he motivated people. And uh, he had this favorite word, which he repeated so often, which is the, the word opportunity. And he was always repeating that word so often in his sermons, opportunity. Our life on this earth, he would say, is all about opportunity. How we use that opportunity. How we use it. 
And he said, the, ma the fact you're here hearing me say that to you today, you today are using that opportunity because you're listening to the word of God and Jesus. And if we follow his ways, we are in safe hands. The other part that was in my prayer was to give thanks for the dedication of all the people of Totley who, over those years, gave not only their time, but money, if they had it, and they didn't have a lot of money, but they gave their time and talents to raise money so this church could be here. And that was one of the things I wanted to thank God for, for the dedication of those people that made this church possible. Without them, and without the uh, Tom Lambert, this church would not be here. It was only his resourcefulness. He was an outstanding man. In fact, one of the most outstanding man, men that I, my pleasure to, 